Sanctification is a word that you will hear frequently in the New Testament and as a doctrine that is taught throughout the church. Knowing what it means is critical to understanding the inseparable relationship between God and the Christian while living in this world. Let's start with the definition of sanctification. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, which is often referred to as ISBEs, states this about sanctification, and I'll quote, To understand this primary meaning, we must go back to the word holy in the Old Testament. That is holy which belongs to J, that is Jehovah God. There is nothing implied here to moral character. It may refer to days and to seasons, to places, objects used for worship, or to persons. Exactly the same usage is shown with the word sanctify. To sanctify anything is to declare it as belonging to God. The key is to understand that anything that is declared as belonging to God is sanctified. That's the simplest way to understand sanctification. Something that belongs to God, is declared to belong to God, is sanctified. In the New Testament, sanctification is a description given to all true believers. All Christians are sanctified in Christ. That is, they are set apart as holy and sacred and belonging to God from the moment of their salvation through this life and into the next. Some of the many scripture passages that talk about this you might recognize are 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Acts 20, verse 32, Romans 15, verse 16, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 13. I recommend that you take a look at these when you have time because they can be very helpful to your understanding of what sanctification really is. However, having been sanctified by God and living like it are two different things. It's much easier to say that you're a Christian than it is to live like you are a Christian. Ephesians 4, 1, Colossians 1, 9 to 10, 1 Peter 1, 16 to 17, encourage us to live like we belong to God. But living a sanctified life is a spiritual battle according to Romans chapter 7, 15 to 20. What we know about our position in Christ must be worked out in our practice for Christ. Who we are must be reflected in what we do. And according to Matthew 7, 16 to 20, the fruit you bear is evidence of the tree that you are. Although there are many scripture passages that discuss the idea that since we belong to God, we should act like it, a few that you might want to look up are 2 Timothy 2.21, Romans 6.13, Philippians 2.5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3, 4, and 7, and 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Some teach that sanctification is a process that takes place between salvation and glorification. In my opinion, saying that sanctification is a process by which a Christian learns to live like a Christian is confusing and doesn't properly represent what sanctification truly is. There is a difference between God setting us apart for himself and us setting ourselves apart for God, which I'll explain here in just a minute. To say that sanctification is a process implies that for your salvation to result in your glorification, you must be successful at sanctification. And if you fail, you could fail to get to heaven. In other words, even though you're saved, if you don't live like it, you might not make it to heaven. Paul is very clear, though, this is not the case in Romans chapter 8, verses 33 to 39. You need to know that sanctification is not a process. It is a state of being. It is a condition of being set apart by God for God. Again, sanctification is simply that which is set apart as holy and consecrated to God. For the Christian, that includes their salvation, their life on this planet, and their glorification when they get to heaven. To help understand this better, I like to use the word transformation rather than sanctification to describe what the Holy Spirit is doing in you in this life. 
I take it from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. In this life, you are being transformed into the likeness of Christ because you are set apart or sanctified to God for his use, not to be sanctified. This is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, and chapter 2, verse 9, and Ephesians 2, verse 10. Sanctification must come before transformation. To put it any other way would be to say that you need to get your life cleaned up first before God will save you. We all know that that is wrong. God takes you the way that you are. Then the Holy Spirit comes into your life and begins to change you into Christ's likeness. This is the transformation stage of sanctification. You have already been adopted by the king. Now he is teaching you to know how to live like his child. In this next section, I'm going to use a chart to help explain all of this. You may need to pause it now and then and think about what is being said, and that's okay. Take your time because it's very important that you understand this. The three parts of sanctification are salvation, transformation, and glorification. Let's look at these three parts of sanctification and see how they all fit together. At salvation, God sets you apart for himself and saves you from the punishment of sin. During the transformation process, that is, in this life, walking in this life, learning to walk in the spirit rather than the flesh, having been set apart for God and having been freed from the power of sin, you can now learn to live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. As the word of God, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, transforms your thoughts and your passions and your will into Christ's likeness, so you can be salt and light to those who are around you. At glorification, having been set apart for God, he now delivers you from the presence of sin in this realm into his kingdom realm for eternity. You see how being sanctified or set apart by God delivers you immediately from the punishment of sin and the power of sin and then guarantees the promise to deliver you from the presence of sin in the future. Let me say this a little differently. Salvation represents your position in Christ. As far as God is concerned, he sees you in Christ and therefore positionally with him, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Transformation represents your progress in Christ. That is learning to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh that you might grow into Christ's likeness. This is Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 to 15. Glorification represents your perfection in Christ. This is when you are finally separated from sin and separated from this body, and you are in heaven. That's Jude 24, 1 Corinthians 15, 53, and Philippians 3, 20 to 21. Likewise, your salvation is all of God. That's Ephesians 2, 8. Your glorification is all of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5.1. But your transformation is you and God. That's Romans chapter 12, 1 to 2, Romans chapter 6, 12 to 13, and 2 Corinthians 3.18. The first part is your position in Christ based on the fact of a past event, and that's your salvation. The third part is your perfection in Christ based on the fact of of a promised future event. And then the second part is your transformation in Christ based on the status of your current practice. One of the biggest reasons some Christians think they could lose their salvation is because they think their glorification is based upon their transformation, but it is not. It is based upon their salvation, according to Romans 8.30. In essence, Sanctification means that God has set you apart for himself by your salvation, through your transformation, unto your glorification. 
All three of them are guaranteed to occur. He has saved you, he will transform you, and he will glorify you. The reason God didn't take you to heaven the minute you were saved is because your transformation is God's plan for witnessing to an unsaved world that the world needs Christ. This is Matthew 5, 16, Acts 1, 8, Romans 10, 14 to 15, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and Philippians 2, 15. Transformation is the process of yielding to the Holy Spirit to conform you to Christ's likeness so God can use you as his ambassador to a lost world. To do this, the Holy Spirit is going to use your conscience and may bring to your mind a Bible verse to help guide you. Either way, this yielding is going to be a battle with your old nature, according to Galatians 5, 16 and 17, and you need to decide who you're going to listen to. Are you going to listen to God and yield to the Holy Spirit? Listen to your conscience and follow it? Or are you going to listen to your old nature, your former flesh? Wait, before you go, YouTube won't give me a donation button until I reach a thousand subscribers. Please subscribe and share this video. It will really help the channel. Thank you so much.